Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're gonna to love today's video because I'm gonna go over the data metrics or data parameters that are within GS Pro. Currently, when I made this video, there are 28 of them. So before I get started, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It'll really help the channel grow and allow me to continue to bring content like this to YouTube. Looking at GS Pro, when you're playing on the courses, if you look off to the right, whenever you're playing, you can display up to 12 of those data parameters or data metrics on screen after you've made your shot. Those can be any of the 28 that are currently in GS Pro. You just click on it and then you can set them. Looking at the driving range, you can have up to 24 or 12 to the right, 12 to the left. So a good majority of the 28 you can have on screen after every single shot. So I'm gonna put all of the data metrics or data parameters up on the screen for you. And essentially what that's going to consist of is carry game, carry raw, total length, ball speed, spin axis, total spin, club speed, club path, club angle of attack, peak height, club face to path, club lie, carry launch monitor or carry LM, offline raw, putt speed, descent angle, VLA, HLA, side spin, back spin, distance to pin, club face to target, club loft, club spin loft, club closure rate, club face, H impact, club face V impact, and smash factor. I'm gonna go through each one of these as best as I can. So only some of them are in the GS Pro manual and some of them are obvious. Uh, I didn't know what all of them were. The ones that I really pay attention to for me is my club path, my angle of attack, my smash factor, my total carry, my carry, things like that. Things that are really, really important in my game. Starting with the upper left hand corner, you've got carry game. Now this is directly from GS Pro. Carry game is the data point is a result of a shot taken in GS Pro with all data points taken into consideration. This includes lie, right, left, up or down. If the ball flies uphill or downhill, surface would be fairway, rough, deep rough, or the wind and elevation. So there's a lot involved in that. So again, that is directly from GS Pro, from the manual. I believe it's on page 41 of the current manual. All right, so carry raw is the next one to the right. This is also directly from GS Pro carry raw. This data point is same as game above, so the same as carry game, except for uphill downhill. It is measured on a flat surface. It also ignores any obstruction like trees. It will give results as if the obstruction wasn't there. All right, next, total length. And total length, basically, that's just the carry plus the rollout. And that's just the total length of your entire shot. Next is ball speed. I think that's pretty obvious. It's just the initial speed coming off your club. Next, going to the right, is spin axis. Um, spin axis is basically the curvature of the shot. So a negative or positive, essentially left or right. Uh, total spin is just the amount of spin on the golf ball uh, immediately after impact. And that's the next one off to the right. After that, to the right, top row, club speed. And club speed is going to be the speed of your club before impact. Next row down, club path. Uh, club path is just the path of your club at the moment of impact. So an inside out swing or an outside in swing. Next is club angle of attack. This is super important. So club angle of attack is basically hitting down on the ball or hitting up on the ball. So with irons, typically you're gonna wanna hit down on the ball. And then with your driver, you're going to hit up on the ball slightly. Next, on the second row, the third one in, uh, is peak height. And that's just pretty obvious. Um, that's the max height of your ball uh, as it flies from the ground to its max height. Club face to path, which is the next one, second row, fourth one in. That's going to be whether your club face is open or closed on your swing. Again, this is pretty important. All right, the next one is club line, uh, which is the fifth one over on the second row. And I had to look this one up because I wasn't exactly sure. 
But from what I could find out, it's basically if the heel of the club hits the ground first and can send the ball in different directions. So um, really kind of a difficult one for me to understand, you know, how the launch monitor can figure that out, but maybe it does. All right, so the next one is Carry LM. And the LM stands for launch monitor. So basically this is directly from GS Pro. Carry LM, this uh, data point is the data as received from the launch monitor using the manufacturer's algorithm. So basically I use the Garmin R10, so that's data coming directly from the Garmin R10. Next one is the second line all the way to the right. And that is offline raw. I had to look this one up because I wasn't exactly sure on this one. And it looks like it's the distance off the target. So, you know, determined by like the side angle or spin uh, and wind. So I'm not exactly sure how, how all that works or how it's, it's relevant. Maybe somebody can explain that a little better for me in the comments because that's all the information I could find on that. Well, some of these were basically unicorns. I could not find enough information, but that's that's the best I can do, sorry. All right, going to the third line, putt speed. I think that's pretty obvious, it's your putt speed. Descent angle is the angle of the ball of the descent in degrees as it's coming down, uh, which is the next one. Next one is VLA. In VLA, uh, this is directly from GS Pro. This is the vertical launch angle. So. GS Pro says this is the, the angle upwards a ball launches when struck. After that is HLA. This is the fourth over on the third line. HLA, this is directly from GS Pro. This is the horizontal launch angle. So the angle left or right in which the ball launches upon being struck. Negative number is left and the positive number is right. The next three data metrics or parameters are very obvious. That's the third line down, number five, six, and seven. So side spin, obviously side spin. Uh, next is back spin. That's obvious back spin. And then distance to pin all the way to the right. Obvious the distance to the pin. All right. So the last row uh, beginning on the left would be club face to target. So uh, club Face to target is basically the angle of the club face in relation to the target line. All right, next is club loft. Um, second one in on the bottom line. Uh, so club loft is basically the loft when your club strikes the ball when it's compressed. All right, the next one is club spin loft. This one seems pretty complicated and honestly quite hard to understand. So I had to look this one up as well. Uh, basically the club spin loft is the spin loft of the ball uh, with measurements that include the club path, the tack angle, the face angle, and the loft. So <laughs> figure that one out. That's uh, it's a pretty complicated metric. Next one is the club closure rate. And I didn't know what this one was, but realized just how important it is and I'm gonna start measuring that. And that's basically how the club head is spinning in your hands um, in the swing or like flipping around in your hands in the swing. All right, the next two are club face H impact and club face V impacts, which is the horizontal impact and the vertical impact. So basically where the club face makes contact um, at impact. Essentially, it's just the impact location. All right, so the last one on the bottom right, that is smash factor. That is my absolute favorite data parameter to look at, especially when I've hit a nice shot, when you hear that nice compressed sound. So the smash factor is essentially the efficiency of that shot. So it's calculated by dividing your ball speed by your club head speed. So let's say you're swinging your driver at 100 miles an hour. So your club head speed is 100 miles an hour, just to make this simple. If you got a 150 mile per hour ball speed, that's essentially the max. So you're gonna get a 1.5 efficiency rating or a smash factor on that. So if you're going down in the world of clubs all the way down to say, you know, a pitching wedge, you're gonna have a much lower maximum because you can't typically, most people can't swing a pitching wedge 
that hard and make the ball fly that fast. Maybe somebody can, I'd love to see it. So that's gonna be more like 1.23 or 1.24 for a perfect shot for a pitching wedge. So I did some research and this is what PGA Tour players are averaging for Smash Factor, starting with driver and going down. So driver is 1.48, three wood is 1.48, three iron is 1.45, four iron 1.43, five iron 1.41, 6 iron is 1.38, 7 iron 1.33, 8 iron 1.32, 9 iron 1.28, and pitching wedge 1.23. And when I first started, I thought that the best you could get was 1.4 on, on every single club. And then I realized I'm trying to get that 1.4 and I'm hitting a, you know, a 9 iron. I'm like, why can't I get there? Well, that's why. So learning about Smash Factor and how that works was really helpful for me in determining just how I'm doing with, you know, angle of attack and club path and all that and how it translates to that uh, Smash Factor or the efficiency of my swings as it hits the ball. It really is pretty amazing how they've come up with that parameter and I think it's extremely helpful. All right, so that's gonna be about it for today's video. If any of you have anything else to add to this, to any of those parameters that I talked about or data metrics, I would love if you put that in the comments. Uh, like I said, I had to look up a lot of these. I wasn't exactly sure about them. I'm certainly not an expert on this, but I came as much of one as I could for you for this video. If you did enjoy today's content, please hit that like button and share with your friends that may be interested in GS Pro and all of the data metrics that are available or data parameters available within the software. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It'll help this channel grow and allow me to bring more content such as this to YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.